Does everyone have a love-hate relationship with airports, or is it just me? As in, do you love that airports make it possible to go coast to coast in like five hours and hate basically everything else about them? Well, this is a top 10 list for the love part of that relationship. It's the top US cities that provide, pound for pound, the most air travel in the United States, and it's up next. This is City Nerd, weekly content on cities and transportation. Viewer suggested topics, always welcome. And yeah, I do log all of the ones that grab me. And sometimes it just takes a while for inspiration to strike. Like, this one is from seven months ago, but I did not forget you, Jake Noble. North American metro areas with the most and least disproportionately busy airports. I bet Charlotte would be number one. You know, that's just throwing down the gauntlet, and if there's one thing I like doing on this channel, it's disabusing people of their priors. And I did like the idea of the most disproportionately busy airports, and I know where to find the data for the US, so that's the way I went with this. So to be honest, my primary interest in this question is as a sort of cool, obscure piece of trivia because I am a trivia nerd. But as I got into researching it and coming up with answers, it became really interesting to think about why the cities that are on this list are on this list and also a more philosophical question. Is it good to have a disproportionately busy airport? On the one hand, it's a city that's punching above its weight in terms of departures and destinations, which is really valuable if you like to travel. On the other hand, it's more space devoted to runways and logistics and parking facilities. It's more noise. It's a mixed bag. Also, even though I'm a travel buff, let's acknowledge that airplanes aren't the most environmentally or climate-friendly travel mode. Air travel probably isn't priced appropriately to account for all the externalities, and a lot of the flights out of the airports that are on this list could and should be replaced by high-speed rail trips. Okay, I'm trying to get to the list relatively quickly today, but let's talk about data for a sec. You can get busiest airports lists on Wikipedia, but I needed a more extensive data set for this. So it's an FAA file called Commercial Service Enplanements. And that is your word of the day. This is people getting on planes, regardless of whether it's the beginning of a nonstop flight or is for a connecting flight on a multi-leg journey. That might give you a hint as to where this list is going. And the metric I'm using for this list is employments per capita, calendar year 2019, so pre-pandemic. Although stuff has really bounced back in 2022, so hopefully we can get back to using the most recent data on some of these lists. And the denominator is metro area population 2019 estimate. So this actually ended up not being that easy. I had to find every airport that serves a metro area, so over 50,000 population, and I had to aggregate emplanements wherever there were multiple airports. And the airports in the FAA data set aren't organized by metro area, so like I had to figure out where Bradley International Airport in Windsor Locks is with no additional geographic information which was at least as tedious as what you're imagining. But I'm not gonna lie, it was still a lot of fun just because that's how big of a dork I am. So today's top 10 list is a bit off the wall and it's definitely designed for you to play along by guessing what's gonna be in the top 10 based on whatever it is you think might contribute to a high number of employments per capita. So that's the setup. Let's get into it. Number 10 is Miami with seven employments per capita in 2019. This includes Miami International, Fort Lauderdale, Hollywood, and Palm Beach. This one shouldn't be a huge surprise. South Florida is a tourist destination in its own right, but also big for the cruise industry and also connecting flights to the Caribbean and South America. Miami International is a big hub for American Airlines and has tons of flights to the Caribbean and South America, while Fort Lauderdale seems to do more domestic business with lots of destinations served by carriers like JetBlue, Southwest, and Spirit. Make of that what you will. Number nine is San Francisco, Oakland with 7.3 employments per capita. This includes SFO and Oakland International. 
SFO handles a lot of domestic travel, but it's United's primary Trans-Pacific Gateway as well. I don't really want to go full airport nerd here, but runway lengths and configurations are super fascinating to me. SFO has two tightly spaced parallel two-mile runways to handle all those long-haul flights, but whether you can use both of them at a given time depends on wind, fog, and even whatever's happening at Oakland International. Oakland is nearly all domestic with a lot of Southwest and spirit, so I guess what I'm saying here is Oakland is basically the Fort Lauderdale of Northern California. Number eight really surprises me it wasn't higher as it has been the world's busiest airport by passenger traffic since 1998. It's Atlanta Hartsfield Jackson, which does nine employments per capita. By now, you should get the sense that a city on this list is either going to be a key tourist destination in its own right, or a major airline hub, which for Atlanta means Delta, and it's purportedly the largest single passenger airline hub in the world, a thousand flights a day to 225 destinations. Number seven, apologies to viewer Jake Noble, but it's Charlotte, North Carolina, where Charlotte Douglas does 9.3 employments per capita. To continue a theme, Charlotte is a major American Airlines hub, the airline's second largest after DFW, and American actually operates about 57% of the flights in and out of the airport, which I do think puts Charlotte at number one on the list of significant US airports that are disproportionately served by a single airline. So I hope that's consolation. Number six is Orlando at 10.2 employments per capita. The vast majority of this is from Orlando International with just a bit of Sanford International mixed in. Orlando is not a transfer hub. It's a destination for pretty obvious reasons. I actually have a lot of thoughts on this. There are various plans out there to connect SunRail, Orlando's regional rail, to the airport, or to build an east-west light rail line between the airport and the Orange County Convention Center. I don't know, what about an east-west rail line that connects the airport to all the theme parks and hotels along I-4 and International Drive with all the tourism and employment they generate? Is that just too crazy of an idea? I mean, I guess just having huge strodes and ginormous parking lots everywhere is working pretty well too, so I don't know. Number five is Honolulu Inuye International, which rounds to 10.2 per capita as well. Honolulu's position on this list, like Orlando, is mainly due to tourism, but it is the hub for Hawaiian Airlines, so there are lots of connecting flights to the other islands. As far as the 10.2, I actually don't know if I agree with the denominator, which is the metro area population. The Honolulu metropolitan area is defined as the entire island of Oahu, which always seemed off to me. I mean, having your entire metro area be contained on an island makes the MPO's transportation modeling a lot more straightforward. But I mean, the North Shore is 30 miles away with mountains in between. I'm not sure I buy it, but maybe it doesn't make that much of a difference in the calculation. The towns on the North Shore are pretty small. Number four is Salt Lake City, which is the Western hub for Delta. 10.5 in payments per capita. You know, I do wonder about the trade-offs of being a major airline hub. It's convenient to have more flight connections in your city, but man, that is a lot of noise pollution and a lot of acreage fairly close to the center of the city, dedicated to a facility that's largely intended to serve people who are just flying through because the airline made them do it. Number three is Las Vegas, 11.1 in payments per capita. This one probably isn't surprising. After all, what major U.S. city has a more tourism-dependent economy? I mean, yeah, Honolulu and Orlando, but those cities do not have the 12 largest hotels in the United States. Real talk, Harry Reid International Airport is probably the primary reason I'm living in Las Vegas right now. It's just super cheap and convenient to get wherever you want to go. It's really the airport of a much larger city, which is great in my opinion, except for the fact that it has the transit connections, or lack thereof, of a very small and impressive city which is something I have lots of ideas about. Okay, while well, you puzzle over the top two, including a number one that does practically double the employments per capita of any other metro area, brief reminder to drop a like on the video if just the idea of airports fills your heart with unmitigated bliss. 
Subscribe if you want this app to serve you more of the same kind of scintillating content. Check out the Patreon link in the description if you're interested in supporting the channel directly. And sub count check, the channel now has enough subscribers to fill Husky Stadium in beautiful Seattle, Washington. It's an urban college football stadium. I don't know if I'd call it urbanist, but it has a link station. It has a connection to the lovely Burke Gilman Trail. And what college football stadium has a better view? Bow down to Washington people. No honorable mentions. What'd you want? Like the city with the 11th most employments per capita in 2019? Trust me, it's not worth it. Number two is Denver International, 11.5 employments per capita. I thought about riffing on the Denver airport conspiracy theories, but this is a serious channel and I don't have time for that. Google it yourself if you must. Anyway, this is apparently the largest airport by land area in the US. It serves as a hub for United and Frontier, and it's a major operations center for Southwest too. It's about as far away from the city as you'd expect from an airport that's designed to facilitate the movement of people who aren't visiting your city at all. Before Denver International opened in 1995, Stapleton Airport was closer in, and now it's been redeveloped with a mix of vaguely urban land uses. So this raises the question that really grabbed me as I was going through this process. Given everything we know about airports, both the good and the bad, is it better to site them close to the city or further away? Or if you think it depends, then tell me what your variables are. I'm interested in the conversation. Number one might have been tough to guess. It's Kahului, Maui with 22.7 employments per capita. Again, the denominator is a little weird since they count the whole island as the Kahului metro area, and that's around 150,000. But even if they didn't, you would still have 50,000 plus in the greater Kahului, Wailuku area. So it would still qualify as a legit metro area, and then the per capita number would just be an even bigger outlier than it already is. And that's it, your champion of disproportionate employments, an island that looks like a guy trying to swim and not having much success. That's all I've got. Roll the patron credits. I appreciate you guys a lot. Thanks for joining today. Keep the off the wall topic suggestions coming. I'll be back with a new episode next week, probably on a radically different topic just to keep you all on your toes. Eh, I'll see you then.